Me and my friend have spent two hours on these two questions and don't have answers. What is the answer? So let's take a look at the first question. Here we are given a region R and we have parametric equations. And our goal is to find the exact area of R. All right, and right here it says A is 0, 0,3 and B is 1, 0. All right, here's the deal. We want to find the area of this region, right? And let's just go to the fundamental. To find the area under the curve, well, you start with a rectangle. It doesn't matter if it's left and or right and just draw a rectangle. And this time we can just draw a vertical rectangle because it works wonders, right? Because this curve like this, vertical rectangles is always sort of vertical rectangle. Sometimes you may want to draw a horizontal rectangle, but that will be when you have a curve that's like this, then you draw horizontal rectangles. Once we have this, the base right here is just a small change in x. Let's denote that by dx. The vertical distance from the x-axis to the curve, that's precisely the y. So that will be the y. So now, let's go ahead and figure out the area of this red rectangle first. It's just base times height, right? So let's put down y times dx. Yep, just like that. But this is just one rectangle, though. We want to have all the rectangles from here to here. Well, in calculus, we are going to add them up by using the super summation, which is just integral. Anyway, that's not super summation, though. It's a super version of the summation. You add them up with integration. Integrating it from negative 1, and pay attention to the x value here, is 1. So from negative 1 to 1. Again, because we are in the x world, and this right here will give you the area of r. Now, we have this and that. You have two ways to do this. Right here, you see that we have y. Um, if you just go here and you see that we can eliminate the parameter and then just plug in. What I mean by that is the following. Take a look right here. Let's minus 1 on both sides. So we get negative 1 over 2t equals x minus 1. And then right here, we can just multiply both, side, multiply both sides by negative 2. So that this and that cancel. And then let's also do it like this. So you can see t equals negative 2 times x minus 1. It's pretty easy to solve for t right here. Once we have that, we can put this right here and get y equals 2 to the t, which is now this. And then after that, we have the minus 1. You can just go ahead and replace this right here and proceed. But I don't think that's the intended solution for this question because we are in the parametric equation section. This is doable. But sometimes, when we have a more complicated parametric equation, it's maybe not possible to solve for t like this. So let's really talk about how to deal with the area under the curve when we are given parametric equations. This is how. It's not that bad. Have a look. Here, let's just put on the integral first. y is this, right? y is that. So here we have. 2 to the t minus 1. Let's just go ahead and write that down. And you see that we are using t, so make sure later on we also have the t. And that's this part right here. We see that we have the dx. To get dx, we will have to go back to the x equation and just differentiate both sides. It's kind of like the u substitution. You put u equal to an expression and then differentiate both sides. We know x is equal to this expression, so differentiating both sides, we get dx equals the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of negative 1 over 2, t, in the t world, is just that, so negative 1 over 2. And let's attach the dt. So this part is going to be replaced the dx. So let's multiply this by negative 1 over 2, dt. Now. Do not just put down negative 1 and 1, though. Why? Because right here, this integral, when we set out negative 1 to 1, it was in terms of x. That means x is going from negative 1 up to positive 1. But right here, we are in the t world. So make sure you also get the t values accordingly. So how do we get the t values, though? Have a look. 
when x is equal to negative 1, plug in to here, right? So again, look at this equation. Plug in negative 1 for the x, and then here we have 1 minus 1 over 2 t. Now let's just solve for t. Put this to the other side, we get negative 2 equals negative 1 over 2 t. And then multiply both sides by multiply both sides by negative 2, we get t equals positive 4. So when x was well this was x equals negative 1, and the corresponding t value is t equals 4. And now let's do the same thing when x is equal to 1. Put it right here. I put it right here. We have 1 equals 1 minus 1 over 2 t minus 1 so we get 0 and then this one t it will be just equal to 0. Hmm. Now you might be wondering how can we have an integral going from a bigger number to a smaller number? Well don't worry. All right so let me just write this down right here. This is equal to let's put a negative 1 half outside of the integral so negative 1 over 2 and then right now we have the integral going from 4 to 0 and then 2 to the t minus 1 dt. Thanks to this negative, we get to switch the limits of integration, so these two bounds. So we actually get positive 1 half integral, 0 becomes right here, 4 goes right here, and then 2 to the t minus 1. And again, thanks to one of the integral's property. So now we just have this integral, we can just work this out. So, one half right here, and then let's open the parentheses for the result of integration. Here's the question. What's the integral of 2 to the t? Hmm. Well, I will put on the answer, and let's see if we remember it. Any number to just the t's power, we get the same thing, but divided by ln2. Yeah, divided by ln of the base. So this is why, so let me just put down a note right here for you. When we integrate, let's say 2 to the t, we don't like base 2, we like to have base e. So we can do this. This is the same as integrating e to the ln2, and then to the t's power. How's that? And then right here, this becomes the integral of e, right? The base stays the same, but we multiply the powers, so we have ln2 times t dt. And you can see that the derivative of this right here is just a number ln2. So when you integrate that, you get this back, e to the ln2 times t, but we will have to divide it by that number. So we just divide it by ln2. Yeah, plus e, but that's not a, the whole thing, it's this one. And this guy is just 2 to the t, so we have 2 to the t over ln2, huh? just like that. Continue, minus Integrating 1 in the t world, we get t. Okay, and then go ahead and plug in the numbers. 4 goes in first, so we will get, let me put this down, 1 half times 2 to the 4th over ln2 minus 4 in the t. That's the first part. And then minus plugging 0, we get 1 half, 2 to the 0 over ln2 minus 0. Okay, work this out. Here we have 1 half, and then this is 16 over ln2 minus 4 minus 1 half. And then remember, 2 to the 0 is equal to 1. So multiply by 1, and then of course we still have that over ln2. And now let's just finish this. I will distribute. Right here, I'm not going to reduce the 2 and 16, I will just write it as 16 over 2 ln2 and then minus 2, right, this times that. And then the reason is because this is minus 1 over 2 ln2. So combining this and that, 16 minus 1 we get 15 over that denominator, so I will just put it as 2 ln2, and then finally minus 2. Whew. This right here is the final answer for that. Hopefully it helps. Now you can try the other question.